Hello, this is Erica from EricaElsewhere.com and welcome to part two of my three-part video series all about how I learned fluent Spanish quickly and how you can do the same. So over these three videos, we're breaking down the six main methods that I use to learn Spanish without studying it in college and without moving abroad. If you're interested in hearing this information in Spanish, check out my second channel, my Spanish channel, which I will link right here. If you have not seen part one, definitely start there and I will also be linking to part three. If you're ready to jump right into these six methods, then check out the description box below where I've linked to my quick start guide to learning fluent Spanish. I'll break down these six methods for you and also give you free resources to help you out in each step. If you don't wanna miss any of my videos about learning Spanish, raising bilingual children, and all of the family adventures that we're having here in Mexico where we now live, then definitely consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Without further ado, let's get into it. So in methods one and two, we really began to build your vocabulary not with boring, repetitious list and vocabulary drills, but with real life listening, which at the same time really helped to build our listening skills. So now in method three, we're going to continue to build vocabulary and work on our listening skills while at the same time working on our speaking, pronunciation, and literacy. That's a lot. How are we gonna accomplish all that? Method number three. Learn to read Spanish and read it out loud every day. Now, before you run away from me, let me tell you that of the six methods that we're discussing here, honestly, learning to read Spanish was one of the easiest and most beneficial ones for me. Once again, I have to credit my dad for this. Thank you, daddy. <laughs> As I've mentioned it previously, he had a bit of a head start in learning Spanish. And once my mom and I were on board with learning right along with him, he told us it was absolutely crucial to read Spanish out loud every single day. So at first I was a bit skeptical about this. I mean, we didn't speak or understand Spanish, so how could we even do that and how would that be beneficial? But honestly, it wasn't long before I discovered how much I was learning to understand, how much I was learning to speak, and how accustomed to the language I was growing just by using this one simple method. In fact, we learn to read Spanish really in just one or two days. Yes. You can learn to read Spanish in one day. How is this possible? Spanish is an extremely phonetic language. It shares our alphabet, yet there are only 24 possible phonemes or unique sounds that you can make in Spanish compared to the English 44. Each vowel has only one possible sound that you can make from it. I mean, let's compare that to the English A, which can sound like a, 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 uh, but in Spanish, the A is always going to sound ah. Always, every time. That's just one example of how easy it is to learn Spanish. Once you know the sounds, you can read. Now there are some consonants that can make more than one sound depending on where they appear in a text, but even for those, there are clear cut rules as to when you should pronounce each sound. So it's honestly not complicated. What I suggest you do, is to get a really good Spanish pronunciation guide in printed form and to learn that well. Now, a video can be of help as well, especially to start when you're learn, first learning how to pronounce the sounds. But I really suggest that you have a printed version because you're going to be using that in the exercise that I'm going to describe to you. So now, get a printed passage for which you also have the audio. This can be, for example, an audiobook for which you have the ebook or a podcast that you have the transcript for. There are a number of options that you can use. Find something that you can both listen to as well as read at the same time. It'll be an added bonus if you can start reading something that you're already familiar with in English. But if you can't find something like that, it's okay. Try to start with a simpler text. It could even be a children's book to start with. Now, before you attempt to read that passage, first listen to a short portion of the audio. Just a couple of sentences to start out with. Follow your eyes along the passage at the same time that you're listening. Then pause the audio and begin to mimic what the speaker said. Look at each word, each letter, each syllable. Now, using your pronunciation guide, start reading that text. You're going to try to resist the urge to read the words as if they were English. Remember, 
Even though some of those words, many of those words are going to look the same as in English or similar, they're completely different words pronounced in a completely new language. Let's take this one for example. You may be tempted to say something like reunion or reunion or something like that, but it's reunión, reunión. Look at each letter, each syllable, go slowly at first and really pronounce that word in your new language and pronounce that according to the Spanish pronunciation guide that you have on hand. At first, you'll need to refer to this guide often, but eventually it'll become second nature. After you're finished reading, listen to the audio again, try to pay attention to where you pronounced it differently and mark that on the transcript. Try to correct those mistakes immediately. We want to get pronunciation right, right out of the gate so that we don't fall into the habit of getting stuck pronouncing something wrong. Those are habits that are hard to break later. Now, of course, if you have a Spanish speaker there with you, then that's amazing. That person is going to be able to help you in your pronunciation right from the start. So grab your friend, your neighbor, your coworker, your schoolmate, and ask them to listen to you read. Nothing beats a real human being there beside you, helping you along. Now, if you don't have anyone like that, then you can turn to online resources, online tutoring. Programs such as italki are really amazing because instead of following a set rigid curriculum, you have the freedom to ask your teacher, will you please listen to me read this passage? Will you please correct my mistakes? And they'll do that for you. You can have your teacher help you in the areas that you most want to improve in. Definitely consider that as a resource. Now, as you read, do not, I repeat, do not worry about understanding everything that you're saying. In the beginning, you're going to understand very little. The reason that I suggested picking out a passage that you're already familiar with in English is because then it's easier to pick out a few vocabulary words, new vocabulary words to add to your list in order to memorize those in Spanish. However, you can do the same thing. Even if it's a brand new text, pick out a few words, learn the meanings, learn the overall, get an overall sense of what you're reading. And then as you read that passage over and over, all of those new vocabulary words are really going to stick in your head because again, you're learning them in context, not with a random list. But again, don't worry about understanding everything. Focus on your pronunciation. Focus on getting your tongue used to pronouncing these new sounds in Spanish. There will be a few that are tricky. You, you may or may not have trouble rolling your R. There are several videos that I've seen to help you with that technique. Even if you can't get that at first, don't worry about it. Don't let that be a stopping point uh, to learning Spanish. Several people have learned fluent Spanish without ever learning how to roll their R's. They're perfectly understandable um, and it's really no problem. However, if you can try to work on that, you may as well do that from the start. Once you get that pronunciation down, spend time reading every single day in Spanish out loud. And don't forget to double check yourself on pronunciation regularly. Listen to that audio or use a real life person or use a teacher from an online program such as italki to correct your pronunciation so that you don't fall into any bad habits of pronouncing the same letter or the same word incorrectly from the beginning because those habits are hard to break later on. This method of reading Spanish out loud is amazing. It was absolutely crucial for me in the beginning because it works on so many things at the same time. You're building your vocabulary. You're, you're working on your listening skills because you're reading out loud and you're also listening to an audio. Most importantly, you're working on your speaking and your pronunciation. Do this every day. You will see how beneficial it is for you. Side note, my mom and dad are actually using the same reading method currently to learn Swahili, which is another very phonetic language and they're having amazing results with it. Method number four. Practice writing Spanish dictations. So we want to really round out our curriculum with including some writing. Now, I don't suggest you spend an excessive amount of time on this part. I've seen so many Spanish courses that focus so much on correct writing and at the end of the day, you don't even know how to speak or understand Spanish. Really, our first priority has to be getting you to a conversational level of Spanish. However, if you are interested in progressing to fluency, well, part of fluency is literacy. So we want to get our reading and writing skills on point. Now, this is also not a scary thing. For the same reason that Spanish is an easy language to read, it's also a very easy language to write. 
Now I had some natural practice writing Spanish because within weeks after joining the Spanish Bible congregation that I've spoken about in other videos, I was, giving a, I was given assignments that I had to present in front of the congregation. I did not have the Spanish skills to simply write out an outline of what I was going to say and then go and present that material. No, I had to write out every single word <laughs> that I was going to say because I was brand new with the language and then I had to practice that over and over. So I took advantage of that opportunity to learn how to write correctly. No one else was going to see my notes, but why not learn how to spell if you're writing anyway? So the writing was based on the Bible and Bible-based publications that I had access to. So I had the chance to write out how I thought something should be spelled and then double check my work. You'll run into a few tricky letters. Sometimes you won't be sure if a word should have a C or a K or an S or a C. That's okay. The more you read, the more you're going to pay attention to all of those tricky letters and your spelling is only going to improve from there. Now you can practice this method using those same audios that you used in method three, but now put away the transcripts. Don't look at those. Listen to the audio and write out what you're hearing. Write out a good portion. Then pause the audio, look over your work, and get that transcript out and see where you made errors. Guys, at this point, you're only a few days into your journey and you're reading, writing, listening, and speaking Spanish. This is the perfect basis for our last two methods, which we will discuss in part three. Guys, that is all for today. Thanks so much for being with me. I can't wait to get into part three with you. Definitely check out that video here next. Find me on my blog at www.ericaelsewhere.com for more information. And if you're ready to jump right into those six methods along with the resources that I have prepared for you, then check out the description box below and download my quick start guide to learning Spanish. Definitely consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell. We're gonna be talking about learning Spanish, raising bilingual children, and expat life here in Mexico. Thanks so much for being with me, guys. I'll see you on the next one.